Assalamualaikum. Good morning, class. Okay, as for today's, we are going to learn on the next subtopic in Chapter 4. That is the preparation of pre-adjusted financial statement. Eh? So, uh, basically, uh, there are two types of financial statements. Eh? Okay, let us look uh, at the learning objectives first. So this is our learning objectives. At the end of this chapter, the student should be able to prepare the pre-adjusted financial statement. Okay, so what are the adjusted pre-adjusted financial statements? Basically, uh, we will learn to prepare the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. Meaning that the financial statement consists of these two statements. Eh? And these financial statements are normally prepared eh, at the end of the accounting period. Uh, so under normal circumstances, okay, the accounting period will consist of 12 months. Meaning if you start on 1st January, so you will uh, close your account at the end of December that is on 31st December. Okay, so the component, let us look at eh? uh, why do we need to prepare this uh, financial statement? Okay, basically, uh, we want to know the performance eh? as well as the position of the business. So the components of the statement of profit or loss will consist of revenue and expenses component. Whereas for the statement of financial position, uh, we will record the components on uh, asset, owner security and liability. Okay. First of all, let us learn how to prepare the statement of profit or loss eh? or also called as SOPL. The acronym is S-O-P-P-L. Okay, SOPL. What is SOPL? SOPL is Statement of Profit or, or Loss. So SOPL is used as a prime source of information about business performance. Eh? So in business performance, we want to see the what? The net profit or loss of the business that has been made within the accounting period. Remember, the purpose of SOPL is to what? is to show the, sorry, to show the profit or loss, eh? profit or loss for the business during the accounting period. It provides information on the operation of the business such as sale and purchase of goods and other income and expenses over the accounting period. Remember the component of SOPL, we include revenue and expenses Component, eh? Therefore, we will match eh, the revenue and expenses uh, to identify whether the business is having profit or loss. So these are the summary on how to derive to the gross profit, net profit or gross loss and net loss. Eh? So at the end, if the sales value, sales represent the revenue eh, greater than the cost of sale, we will have gross profit. Untung kasar. Okay, but if the cost of sale greater than the sales, meaning the cost, the expenses is greater than the revenue from sale, then we will have gross loss. Okay. Uh, at the end, okay, we will also match the overall revenue, not just sales but other income, okay, with the total expenses. So the total expenses will consist of cost of sale and other operating expenses. So when we match these two items, total revenue and total expenses, and if we find that the total revenue is greater than the total expenses, we will have net profit. And if the other way around happen, where the total expenses is greater than the total revenue, then we will have net loss. Okay, so let us look the format together. Okay, so this is the comprehensive format. Okay, so the title start with the name of the business. 
Okay, and followed by the title of the statement. The title of the statement will be statement of profit or loss for the year ended. Okay, depend on your question. If the business end is reporting period on 31st December each year, so you should write 31st December. Okay, next, the first part. Okay, let us look at the first part of the, sorry, the first part of the form, uh, format. Eh? Okay, the first part is we start with the revenue. Okay, the revenue represent by the sale. So the sale is recorded as the starting point of our format. Next, we will need to find the net sale. So how to find the net sale? Okay, we will identify is there any sales return or sales discount. Sales return is also known as return inwards and sales discount is also known as discount allowed. So to derive to net asset, sorry, net sales, we will minus, okay, the return inwards and discount allowed from the total sale. Then only we will get net sales. Eh? Next part is to record the cost of goods sold. So to get the cost of goods sold here, okay, cost of goods sold is this one. Okay, I'm going to highlight this. The cost of goods sold is derived by this for formula. So we will start by recording the opening inventory. This is the stocks that we have uh, in our hand on the first day of our accounting period. So if our accounting period ends on 31st December, our starting point will be on 1st January. Eh? As I mentioned to you that the financial statement is normally prepared for uh, 12 months periods. Eh? So the opening inventory is the stock in our hand as at 1st January on that particular reporting year. Plus the net purchase. But to get the net purchase, okay, we have to match eh, the total purchase and the return outwards and discount received, if any, during the year. Similar to net sales, eh, you derive the net purchase by subtracting eh, or minus the return outwards and discount received from the total purchases. Then you can get the net purchases. Okay, in addition, if you have any expenses related to purchase, such as carriage in words, eh, this is the transportation cost in bringing the goods eh, into the business. Remember, this is what we have learned chapter three. Okay, and if you have other expenses on purchase, such as the duty, the duty is similar to the tax, eh, tax that imposed on our purchase. Eh, or any uh, other expenses such as insurance, eh, insurance that particularly uh, for the product that we purchase. Eh? So these are called the expenses on purchase. So you have to add up to the net purchase. Then only you get cost of goods purchase. Eh? Cost of goods purchase. So cost of goods purchase is not cost of goods sold yet. So to get the cost of goods sold, what you need to do is that you have to find the cost of goods available for sale. So the cost of goods available for sale is the total of cost of good purchase and opening inventory. So when you add up these two, you will get cost of goods available for sale. And if you have any closing inventory at the end of the year, you have to minus, then only you will get cost of goods soon. What is closing inventory? Closing inventory is the stock that you have at the end of the reporting period. That is on 31st December. At the end, you will get the cost of goods sold. And this cost of goods sold, okay, what you do is that you will minus, eh, you will minus it from the net sale. Okay, right? So let me. Um, uh, summarize here. So this is your net sale, net sales. Okay, net sales. You will minus the cost of goods sold. 
So if your sales, as mentioned just now, if your sales, I mean the net sales, is greater than your cost of goods sold, then you will have gross profit. Okay. But if your net sales less than the cost of goods sold, you will have gross loss. So this is the one that we will find in the first part of the statement profit or loss. Okay, let us continue on the next part of the format. Okay. So the next thing is you will bring down your gross profit or gross loss here. You will continue the sopel on the next part here. So if you have a gross profit, what you need to do, you will add the other income. Eh? This is also revenue or also known as other in income. So other income is income other than the sales revenue. In running your business, you may also have other income or other revenues from sales such as rent, receive, okay, when you rent part of your shop to other uh, party, okay, so you will receive the rent money, or you may also have other income from your investment, such as in the fixed deposit account. Uh, so you will have interest received in terms of your other income, or you may have income as an agent. Therefore, you may receive income in terms of commission received. So what you do is you will add up the gross profit with the revenues. Okay. The next part is you will less other operating expenses. Previously, we only record expenses related to purchase, eh? such as the purchase expenses, uh, other expenses related to purchase, such as carriage inwards, insurance on purchase, and duty on purchase. We might also have other operating expenses, eh, such as salaries and wages, insurance. Now, this insurance is um, referring to other insurance, eh, not insurance related to purchase, such as eh, insurance on the building that you occupy, insurance on motor vehicles eh, that you have for your business. So that type of insurance is recorded under other expenses. Eh? And other expenses such as rental, interest expense, carriage upwards, eh, advertising, stationery, and if you have others. Eh? So what you need to do is you will less. Okay, you will less. Therefore, now this is representing your total revenue. Okay which include revenue from sales and so on and other income. And then this is your total expenses, eh? total expenses. So at the end, you can identify whether the business is having profit or loss, okay, by matching the total, okay, total revenue and total expense expenses so if your total revenue is greater than your total expenses you will have net profit but if your total expenses is greater than your total revenue then you will have net net loss so what you need to do at the end this net profit class okay what you need to do is that will be transferred eh? this net profit later on, will be transferred to statement of profit or loss. Okay, this net profit later on will be transferred to statement of financial position. Eh? So let me right here. 
Okay. This statement, uh, sorry, this profit or loss will be transferred to the statement of financial position and you will add in the owner's equity section. Don't forget class, when you have net profit or net loss later on, okay, you will continue, okay, by posting this value to the statement of financial position under owner's equity section. Okay, let us continue on the next statement that is statement of financial position. Eh? Okay, if uh, recall, uh, if the statement of profit or loss is to provide information regarding the performance, whether the business is having profit or loss, the statement of financial position, on the other hand, okay, will provide uh, information related to the business financial structure and solvency, where it will specifically report on the business position such as the assets, liabilities and owner's equity at a given point in time. Okay. Uh, and please be aware that uh, the presentation of asset uh, and liabilities need to be separated according to its classification, eh? where the assets eh, will be presented um, uh, based on their category. Eh? Therefore, you will separate between the current and non-current asset uh, and similar to the liabilities where you have to separate it into current and non-current liability. Uh, statement of financial position is also called as balance sheet eh, traditionally. Okay, um, let us look. Uh, this is the comprehensive format of the statement of financial position. So here we have uh, assets, okay? Start with the non-current asset and then followed by the current asset. And then uh, you have uh, the section for owner's equity and section for liabilities. Eh? Remember, the liabilities need to be uh, categorized into its types, non-current BT and current liability. Okay, let us look um, uh, in detail on the asset section. Okay. So this is asset section. The assets of business, as I mentioned to you, is categorized into non-current asset and current asset. Eh? So we have non-current asset here and current assets. So the non-current assets, okay, uh, as what we have learned, is those assets that has used the uh, estimated useful life more than one year, eh? more than one year. And this non-current asset is divided into three categories. One is tangible. Second is intangible. And the final one is investment. Okay, so the first one, the first part will be the tangible asset. Tangible asset, those assets that exist in physical form. Okay, next, followed by the intangible asset, where it not exists in physical form, but the asset is exists. Eh? The last one is in investment. Okay, so the first section of asset is non-current asset. Done. Now, followed by the next category of asset that is current asset. So, what is the meaning of current asset? Current asset refer to the cash eh, and other uh, assets eh, that can be converted into cash within one year, eh, such as the inventory or the closing stock, the accounts receivable, uh, and others. So, at the end, okay, you will add up all the assets, okay, and you will have this total figure known as total assets, okay, known as total asset. Okay, by the way, um, uh, 
uh, in presenting the non-current asset for tangible asset, okay, we have additional uh, presentation where we have to disclose the tangible asset at carrying value. Okay, so what is carrying value? Carrying value is derived by subtracting the accumulated depreciation from the cost value. So you will have to find the accumulated depreciation first to minus from the cost value to get the carrying value. Okay, we will learn the uh, depreciation topic on uh, chapter 6 later on. Eh? Okay. Uh, while others, you can just record its final value on the statement of financial position. Eh? You can derive from the trial balance, eh? the amount of those other assets. Okay, let us continue the statement of financial position on the next section. That is owner security section. Okay, so the statement of financial position will be continued by the next section. Okay, the third one that is the owner's equity. So, owner's equity consists of what? It consists of the, okay, capital at the beginning of the year. And then, don't forget, if you have other additional capital, you will add up here. And we will also add the net profit or net loss. Eh? We will adjust for net profit or net loss that we derive during the year. Remember, this is the amount of the profit or loss derived from the statement of profit or loss that we have prepared earlier. So if you have a net profit, you will add to the capital. But if you have net loss, you will minus from the capital. As net profit and net loss is belong to the O owner of the business. Therefore, you have to adjust it in the owner's equity section. And then, uh, if you have any drawing during the year, remember what is drawing? Drawings is the uh, referring to the uh, goods or cash eh, taken by the owner for their personal uh, reason. Uh, for example, the owner took the stock of the business to be given as a lucky draw gift for his family day. Uh, that is referring to drawings eh? because the owner took the stock for his personal reason, not for resale to the customer. So it uh, categorized under draw drawing. So if you have any drawing during the year, the drawings need to be deducted from the amount of the capital. It shows that there is a decrease in the owner's equity. So at the end, eh, you will have the net amount here which refer to the uh, net owner's equity. Eh? Net owner's equity. Okay. The statement of financial position will be continued by the liability section where the liability section is divided into non-current liabilities and current liabilities. Remember, non-current liabilities are the debt, okay, where the repayable period is, repayable period is greater than one, one year. Such as the uh, long-term loan, eh, loan from bank, eh, and mortgage on premises, okay. Whereas the current debt is the debt where the repayable period is less than one year. For example, bank overdraft, eh, debt from our accounts payable, eh, the unpaid expenses or accrued expenses. Eh, accrued expenses is the outstanding uh, expenses eh, that you have not paid during the, the year. So at the end, okay, we have uh, come to the end of the statement of financial position where we will add up the equity and uh, owner's equity and the liability section. Okay. So the, on, the total owner's equity and liability section class at the end should be the 
same. Eh? It should be similar to the total asset. So if the um, if the uh, total assets figure, okay, this is the total assets figure. Eh? If the total assets figure, okay, this part is equal to the total owner's equity and liabilities figure. So we can say that most likely you have prepared the statement correctly. Eh? Most likely you have prepared the statement correctly eh? because it meet eh, the, the accounting equation. If you can still remember the accounting equation, the basic one where asset is equal to owner's equity plus liability. Therefore, if your total assets, okay, on this part, this figure is equal to the total figure of owner's equity and liability, therefore, it can be said that you have prepared the statement correctly. That is the indicator that we have prepared correctly. Okay. But somehow, as I mentioned to you, please be, uh, be careful because there are also errors that not affecting the trial balance. Eh? So basically, uh, this is the format of the statement of financial position. So let me recap. The first section is asset section. So asset is categorized uh, under two. That is non-current assets and current assets. So you have to separate the assets into its category. And as for the non-current asset, you have to categorize it to tangible, intangible and investment. So follow the order accordingly. And to present the tangible asset, okay, you have to disclose the asset uh, by its carrying value. To get the carrying value, you have to minus the accumulated depreciation value from the cost value. Okay, so at the end, these are the amount for total asset of the business. So you can see the position of the asset of the business in the statement of financial position. Okay, the next section is owner's equity. So as mentioned, owner's equity consists of the capital at the beginning of the period. Okay, um, and the net profit obtained during the period. So if you have loss, so you have to minus from the capital uh, from the big from the capital, and you have if you have any drawing, any drawings will be deducted from the amount to get the capital at the end of the P period. Okay, uh, the last section will be the liability of the business. So the liability will be divided into two categories: non-current liability and current liability. Uh, please remember to uh, differentiate it correctly. non currency are the debt that need to be paid more than one year where the repayable period is taken longer than the current liability. So at the end, when you add up the owner's equity and liability, we assume that the total eh, or the figure for owner's equity and liability should be the same as uh, the figure of asset so if it satisfy or it or it ties to each other then most likely we have prepared the statement correctly okay so uh to have better understanding okay let us try on this following question okay this very simple one the first question is taken from the book of mud enterprise eh? the owner is mud ahe uh, this balance is extracted from the books of Mud Enterprise. So this is actually in the form of trial balance. So this is the closing. Eh? This is the closing balance from the uh, Mud Enterprise. We have several accounts such as purchases and sales, return inwards and return outwards, commission received, discount allowed, discount received, and so on. So the requirement here, we have to 
prepare. Eh, we are required to prepare the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st March 2000 year 3. Okay, recall the format of statement of profit or loss. The statement of profit or loss is to show the performance of the business. The performance in terms of what is either profit or loss. So to derive to profit or loss, we need to match eh, the total revenue with the, sorry, with the total expenses, with the total expenses. And if you have revenue greater than expenses, then you will have pro profit. This is the basic formula eh, where you have to compare revenue and expenses. Therefore, in this particular balance, we need to identify the revenue and expenses item. So we have learned what is revenue, what is expenses. Therefore, we have to identify the revenue and expenses item because these two items will be presented in the statement of profit or loss. Okay. So remember, in statement profit or loss, we only um, present the revenue and expenses item. And we have to prepare the statement of profit or loss using vertical format eh, for our syllabus because we have two format, okay, the horizontal format or known as the traditional uh, format and the vertical format. As for our syllabus, we are using the vertical format. Eh? So let us look uh, the answer together. Okay, this is the answer. Uh, so if I can uh, zoom, uh, zoom in. Let me show you in detail. First of all, what you need to do, you have to prepare the statement of profit or loss using the format given. Eh? This is a format given, okay, as I explained to you just now. So we start the starting point. Of course, we need to uh, start with the title first. So this is our title, okay. So the starting point will be sales, eh? sales. So look up at the question. We have to prepare the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st March 2000 year 3. So you will start with the title here. Okay, Mark Enterprise and you start with the title statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st March 2000 year 3. Then what you need to do is that you have to pick up, okay, the accounts that are given here and prepare the statement of profit or loss according to the formats given. So the first line here, we have purchase and sales account. So how to identify whether the purchase on debit or credit side and sales on debit or credit side? Remember the rules I explained to you before this, okay? The debit balance accounts, okay, usually refer to the asset and expenses account, eh? The debit balance usually represented by asset and expenses account, while the credit balance usually represent by the owner's equity, liability, and revenue account. So, to identify whether purchase and sales is on debit or credit side, we have to look at the category first. So purchase, eh? we try on purchase first. So purchase account is expenses account. So if it is expenses, it should be on the debit side. Whereas sales, sales is a revenue account. So revenue account, it should be on the credit side. So you have to pick up the right 
figure for purchase and sale. Eh? So since we start with sales, so we will pick up this figure, 135,987, and we will record it here. So we start, this is our starting point. Okay, sales figure. Right. Then we continue to find the net sale. Remember the format, how to find the net sale? You have to minus for any written in words or discount allowed, if any. Okay, so you will continue by using the same question. So pick up where is written in words. Remember, written in words always debit balance. Written in words is credit balance. Eh? So pick up the right one. Okay, written outwards, credit, written inwards on debit side. Okay, so transfer the amount correctly, followed by the discount allowed. Okay, which one is discount allowed? So discount allowed, remember, is on debit side. Okay, debit side, whereas discount received is on credit side. Okay. This is what we have done in our uh, previous chapter in the uh, trial balance, eh? the preparation of trial balance. So you continue the rest, okay, and you will get the net sales of 135,227. Okay, the format continues by finding the cost of goods sold. So based on the format, Okay, we will uh, record the um, the related accounts, okay, such as the opening inventory, the purchases, the purchases returns, okay, the purchases discount. The purchases return is also known as return outwards, whereas the purchase discount is also known as discount received. So you can use either or. Okay, continue. If you have any expenses on purchase, okay, you have to record. Okay, since in this question, you only have one that is carriage inward. So you just have to record carriage inward item only. Okay, so class, when you have done on the uh, recording, you the, the, the best way is you just have to uh, cancel this item so that you know you have uh, record it accordingly okay example this one okay you have record it accordingly okay next you have the cost of goods sold already that is 78290 so what you need to do is that you have to minus from the sale okay minus from the net sale and if your net sales is greater than your cost of goods sold, then you will have a gross profit. Okay? You will have a gross profit. So in this question, since your net sales, 135,227 is greater than your cost of goods sold, 78,290, so you will have a gross profit. Okay, next we will continue to find the net profit. Okay, so how to find the net profit? You will add up the gross profit with other income or other revenue. Based on this question, we only have uh, one other income that is commission received, eh? 2510 Okay, therefore, your total revenue now is 59447 So, the rest is other operating expenses. Eh? So, the expenses here is referring to all expenses, eh? other operating expenses. Okay, other operating expenses uh, that not include the expenses of purchase. Eh? Okay, on this part, we already record eh, expenses on purchase. Uh, expenses on purchase. So this part, we will record other expenses that is not included as expenses on purchase. Such as, okay, so to find this, you have to refer to your trial balance back. So this is your trial balance. So here we still have other accounts not accounted, such as 
rent, advertisement, electricity and water, repair on motor vehicles, wages and salaries, printing and stationaries, interest on loan, insurance. Okay, so you will record all these expenses under other operating expenses eh, under this section. So at the end, you will have 53,900 and you will minus from the total revenue. So if your total revenue is greater than your total expenses, then you will have net profit. And if the other way around, you will have net loss. In this case, in our question, we have a net profit. And later on, if this question is continued, eh, this net profit, remember, you have to transfer to the statement of financial position under owner's equity section. But in this question, we just stop until here because there is no uh, further requirement for us to prepare the statement of financial position. So this is the discussion for uh, question on my enterprise. Eh? At the end, we have a net, net uh, we have a gross profit, okay, gross profit, and we also have a net profit by this amount, eh? those highlighted in the yellow color. Okay, so this is how do you prepare for the statement of profit and loss. Eh? This is uh, um, regarding the transaction before any adjustment happen yet. Okay, let us continue on the next, next question. Okay, next question is uh, Abrah Bersaudara. So I'm using this question now. Okay. The net profit of Abrah Bersaudara for the year ended 31st October 2000 year 3 was 32,430. So we are already given the net profit for this particular period. We are required to prepare the statement of financial position of the business as at that date using the balance below. So here... We are given, again, the balance from tri-balance. Okay, this is the debit balance and this is the credit balance. So, recall what we have learned. In order to prepare the statement of financial position, we have to identify the three components. Eh? Because the objective of the statement of financial position is to show the position of the business in terms of is assets, okay, its equity, and its li liability. So, we have to identify from these given figures, okay, into asset, equity, and liability. Okay, it to, uh, to be recorded in the statement of financial position. So let us recall the format of the statement of financial position. Remember, okay, the first section will be the asset. Okay, the first section is assets. Okay, this is the first section, assets. So assets is categorized into non-current asset and current asset. And for the current, for the non-current asset, we will divide it into tangible, okay, tangible, followed by intangible and in investment, okay. And the next section is the owner's equity and life. Liability. So liability, okay, the liability will be um, consists of the non-current liability and current liability. I repeat, the non-current liability is the debt where the repayable period, okay, where is the repayable period 
is greater than one year, whereas the current liability is the debt where the repayable period is less than one year. So at the end, okay, the figure for total asset should be the same with the total figure of the owner's equity, okay, and liability. If it is the same, so most likely we have prepared the statement correctly. Okay, back to our question, Abrah Bersaudara. So here we have all the balances from the book of Abrah Bersaudara. What you need to do is that you have to prepare eh, uh, the statement of financial position based on this closing figure. So similarly, as per statement of profit or loss, you have to prepare the statement of financial position using the vertical format given. Eh? So here we are. The first section. Asset. Uh, before that, don't forget to write the title first. Okay. So the title is Statement of Financial Position as at 31st October 2000 year 3. Eh? As our year end is on 31st September 2003. Eh? So accounting period is very important for you to identify first. Okay, next is let us uh, show you the, the answer. Okay. Right, so we start with the asset section. Assets consist of non-current assets. So identify what are the non-current assets. We have motor vehicles. We have plant and machinery. We have features and fitting and freehold premises. Okay, since we only have the cost value, therefore the carrying value will be the same as the cost value. You just carry the same figure since we have no depreciation value yet. Okay, next is. Okay, followed by the next section, current assets. So current assets, we have closing inventories, accounts receivables or debtors, cash at bank and cash in hand. Therefore, the total, eh, the total assets is 267,400 ringgit. Okay, this is our total asset. Eh? assets okay next we continue by the next section owner's equity okay so owner's equity we will um start with the capital okay we have capital okay by the way don't forget uh to um slash uh, those item that has been recorded okay assets assets Assets, assets. Okay, uh, so now we are picking up the capital. Eh? We are using the, we are preparing the owner's equity. So we pick up the capital. Okay, here, this is our capital. And don't forget, you have to add the net profit during the year. Okay, since we are not required to prepare the statement of profit or loss for Abrah Besaudara, the question already provide us the net profit. So this is the net profit given just now. 32,430 eh, during this period. So you just have to add to the equity section here. So you add this figure and then adjust for any drawing. Do you have drawing? Yes, you have drawing the, during the year. Okay. And you will have a net equity by 235,570. Okay, we are not finished yet. We still have another section that is liabilities. Okay, we have here loan from ACF Finance. Okay, usually loan from any is bank in any financial institution is regarded as non-current liability. Eh? And we have accounts payable. So accounts payable is our current liability. So let us complete our statement of financial position by recording the liability figure. So when we add up, 
at the end, owner's equity plus the liabilities, we will have a total uh, where the total is equal to the total of asset. So most likely, we have prepared the statement of financial position correctly. So this is how you prepare both uh, statement of profit and loss and statement of financial position. Okay. So that's the end.